You are what you eat. Every 28 days, your skin replaces itself. Every five months, your liver replaces itself. Every 10 years, your bones replace themselves. Your body makes these new cells from the food you eat. What you eat literally becomes you. So we, we know how to eat. We, we, so um, we need to be reminded. I just kind of want to go through this quickly. In Genesis 1.29, God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. We know that after the fall, man was given the herb of the field in addition. We understand these to be the vegetables. We know that after the flood, when all the plant life was destroyed, that man was allowed to eat meat. In Genesis 9.3, he was told, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall not eat. So man could eat meat, but not the blood. And we know that um, there were certain animals that man could eat and certain animals that he couldn't eat, the clean and the unclean. Does anybody remember where the list of these are found? Okay, uh, Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. Okay, so we won't spend time on these. You can read these or you've read these already. Uh, in the book Ministry of Healing, Ellen White wrote, whoops, all I did was touch it. <laughs> In order to know what are the best foods, we must study God's original plan for man's diet. Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. And then she also wrote in the book Spiritual Gifts, 4a, page 120, God gave man no permission to eat animal food until after the flood. Everything had been destroyed upon which man could subsist. And therefore the Lord in their necessity gave Noah permission to eat of the clean animals which he had taken with him into the ark. But animal food was not the most healthy article of food for man. <laughs> Is there anybody else that, that says this kind of uh, stuff? Well, we have Dr. Kim Williams who is the past president of the American College of Cardiology. And his statement is there are two kinds of cardiologists, vegans, and those who haven't read the data. In fact, the American College of Cardiology recommended to hospitals that at every meal at least one plant-based main dish be offered and also recommended that processed meats not be offered. Processed being like uh, frankfurters and salami and bologna and those kind of meats and we'll see in a little bit more about them. Diet, a plant-based diet, is the only thing that's been found to reverse heart disease. The only thing. We have no medicine that can reverse heart disease. We have no medical procedures that can reverse heart disease. Only a plant-based diet. I had a gentleman yesterday in the clinic uh, who I've been, he's been a patient of mine for several years. And uh, he smoked, he drank eats just whatever, eats normal Louisiana diet. And uh, I finally was able to get him off of drinking because his liver enzymes started to go up. Well, then over time he developed some chest pain. So I've got him set up with cardiology. And we were talking about food. And, uh, and I told him, recommended a plant-based diet. He said, ah, I just, I'm not used to eating vegetables. And then I thought of and was able to tell them about several other patients. I can think of three right now, all men who all told me, I can't eat vegetables. One of them told me, my mother did not give me the green gene. <laughs> he just didn't eat vegetables. Over the years that I've known them, all three of them have had heart attacks. And now all three of them are eating vegetables. And I told this gentleman, you know, it would be good if you ate them before you had the heart attack. It just makes sense. It's plant-based diet. Um, cancer. 
The American Cancer Society recommends four rules of thumb for cancer prevention. The two that are not on here are to limit alcohol intake and to get exercise and maintain a good weight. But here, choose most of the foods you eat from plant sources, five or more servings a day is their recommendation, and limit the intake of high fat foods, particularly from animal sources. So the American Cancer Society says, go toward a plant-based diet. One of the reasons is recently the World Health Organization in their uh, studies and recommendations classified processed meats as a group one carcinogen. Now, just to give you some perspective, uh, tobacco is also classified as a group one carcinogen. And what that means is there is much evidence to show that it actually causes cancer. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're liable to get cancer as much from eating processed meats as you, as you are from smoking. It just means that it has been studied so much. There is just gobs and gobs of scientific information on the fact that these products, tobacco and processed meats, are carcinogenic. Red meats are classed as 2A, which is probably causes cancer, and then you go on down the list to those things that have not been shown to cause cancer. So the American Institute for Cancer Research shows that healthy diet and lifestyle behaviors could prevent 40% of cancers. This gentleman, Dr. Garth Davis, states, I am not biased because I am vegan. I am vegan because after extensive research, I have learned that besides being the most ethical decision, a plant-based diet is the best diet for my health and the health of the environment. And not just cancer and heart disease, but uh, here Dr. Greger uh, on Nutrition Facts states that plant-based diets not only appear to guard against get getting diabetes in the first place, they may successfully treat the disease better than the diabetic diets patients are typically placed on, controlling weight and cholesterol. In fact, the data is out. You reverse diabetes with a plant-based diet. You can't do that with medication or any of the other means that we've had in medicine. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics states that it is their position that appropriately planned vegetarian, including vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits for the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. There's so much data out there. We have the data of the blue zones, and everybody's talked about that, the places in the world where people live to be older than 100 years of age, which is not that common, but all of those places have a plant-based diet. We have actually more than 70 years and over 100,000 individuals in the Adventist health studies, also showing the benefit of a plant-based diet. And we've talked about this before. The, this year, the Eat Lancet Commission, uh, uh, the healthy diet to save the planet. Uh, individuals from all around the world uh, looking at climate change, looking at the population growth, looking at the availability of land for agriculture, have determined that by the year 2050, we're going to have 10 billion people on this planet. And in order to sustain them, the planet, we need to do the following. And just look at the center plate there. We need to half the consumption of red meat and double the consumption of nuts, fruits, and vegetables. So it's not just us. We started saying this over 100 years ago, but everybody is saying that now. Everybody. Plant-based diet. So let's look at some practical things uh, for a plant-based diet. Uh, you know, the whole thing started back in the Garden of Eden. Eve uh, looked at the fruit of the tree, and she saw that it was good for food, she saw that it was pleasant for the sight, uh, and it was a tree desired to make one wise, and she ate of it. And since then, our appetite has been perverted. Do you believe we have a perverted appetite? Is that good or what? <laughs> yeah, our appetite's perverted. <laughs> our taste is perverted. And so you cannot use that as a guide 
to make your food choices. You have to use your mind. You have to make choices, rational choices, based on what you know. Uh, this gentleman uh, is someone who's been working a lot with food and nutrition. He has this little statement that I just think is really good. I use it over and over again. He says, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Now, here we go, all plants. But everybody's in a different place. You gotta work with people where they are. So, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. What does he mean by this? Well, food. Real food grows, rots, and dies. You put a hostess Twinkie on a shelf, it might stay there for 20 years and not change. Uh, food, real food, rots. You can't keep it long. It doesn't have preservatives and a bunch of chemicals. It doesn't need a label, and it doesn't make health claims. You go in the supermarket, you see all these food, these boxes that say, low fat, heart healthy. What was that? Low cholesterol, exactly. Real food doesn't make those claims. Real food is very quiet. It's in the quiet sections at the peripheries of the supermarket. Um, when we look at the leading causes of death in the world, heart disease is the major one. You can see that in the yellow circle there, and cancer and respiratory disorders. Those are the main killers. You look down at the very end in the small circle and you see war and murders like number four at the bottom. Those are the things that the news talks about. But the things we really need to be concerned are things like heart disease and cancer. Well, the risk factors that lead to that also are very instructive. You see that the main risk factor is smoking, and then high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, and look at the following one, low fruits and vegetables. That's been determined to be one of the leading causes. What we don't eat is killing us what we don't eat. The American diet, uh, the acronym SAD, Standard American Diet, I think we're all familiar with that. Um, the American diet is 53% processed food, 32% uh, animal products, veggies and fruits and beans only 11% of the American diet, and whole grains only 4%. And of the whole, of the fruits and vegetables, look to the right there, let's see, the right, the left, there almost 50% of fruits and vegetables that Americans eat consist of french fries and ketchup. 85% is processed and animal products. Over 90% of the American diet is not good food. It's not good for us. What we're eating is killing us. What we're not eating is killing us, and what we're eating is killing us. Eat food, not too much. Over a hundred years ago, Ellen White wrote in the book, Ministry of Healing, most persons who give the plan a trial will find that two meals a day are better than three. Okay, and so today we have intermittent fasting. We have time-restricted eating. People are starting to discover that we actually need to eat less, especially in the light of the obesity epidemic that we're having nowadays. So. I want to do something, uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna work, but I asked three volunteers, and so I want them to come forward and I need some mics for them, I, and they could sit right up here, right in the middle, okay, the three volunteers. I want to do the following. I want to show you some pictures of food. I wanna show you some plates of food, and I want you to talk to me about it and tell me what's good about them. Also, what might be bad about them. Okay, but mostly they're good. So here's a picture of a plate of food. So um, what's, what's good about it? It's colorful. Very good, thank you very much. Colorful, okay? When you pick food, and we'll say a little more about that, the more color in your plate, the healthier it is. Just make it colorful. I've actually been through the cafeteria here and seen people with white, white, and brown. Put some color in it. I think we may have more, yeah. So put some color in it. What else, what do you see? You got protein. Okay, where? In the beans. Okay, excellent. The legumes, legumes are very important. They, they just have so much, they're packed. We should have, they, there's almost a recommendation we should have legumes every day, but they're, they're good. But protein, I'm sorry, were you gonna say something about protein? Okay, I, I'll say some pro 
protein, then uh, have Jennifer, what she's going to say. You find protein now in everything, okay? Protein is in every kind of food. We used to say you really got to get your legumes for a vegetarian and combine them with the grains and all that. We don't say that anymore. And when I say we, I don't mean just Adventists, but dietitians and nutritionists. Everything's got protein. If you got a good varied diet, especially in a advanced and developed country like this is, you will not have any problems with protein deficiency. So, but that's good. Legumes are very important and you have that there. So that's good. Yes. I was just going to say it's awesome because half of the plate is veggies. Thank you. Half of the plate is veggies. So, and that's a really important principle. Half of your plate should be fruit or vegetables. Okay, fruit or vegetables, half the plate. So when you're taking your choices, make sure half of it is fruit or vegetables. That's where you get your vitamins and minerals. What else do you get what, from fruits and vegetables? Some fiber. Fiber, fiber is so important, so important. It, it prevents disease, it, it's found to, to be associated with low risk of cancer, uh, it also, helps manage blood sugar, uh, it helps absorb cholesterol, uh, fiber is so important. Uh, do you find fiber only in the fruits and vegetables? Where else? Find it everywhere. It, that's right, almost like protein. Uh, you find it in the grains and in the legumes also. So uh, the important thing is that it not be processed. These are real foods. You can get these without labels, okay? All right, anything else about Um, it looks like the vegetables was grilled, so it decreases the likelihood of the nutritional value being cooked out of it. Okay, all right, lightly grilled, so instead of boiling them, and you can lose a lot of water-soluble vitamins when you boil them, so that's, that's, that's very good. Okay, let me show you another plate. What do you think of this one? <laughs> Okay, let's talk about it. What do you see there? What's good? What's may, may not, maybe not good? Yeah. It's got a lot of, lot of processed like, foods. Okay, it, it does. Now, the pasta, you can get processed pasta. You can get whole wheat pasta because pasta is made from wheat. So, um, and, and that takes a certain amount of knowing how to cook it and prepare it. Uh, my wife has a dish that she makes, which is, we, we, pick, we learned it in a restaurant and really liked it, and she made it at home, and that's spaghetti with broccoli and then like a cheese sauce over it. Well, we got off of cheese, uh, and uh, she, she, made, she invented a sauce that doesn't have cheese in it. I don't like that on whole wheat pasta. I, I just don't like it on whole wheat pasta. So we don't eat it a lot. But what I do like on whole wheat pasta that she also makes is pesto. She makes this great pesto basil sauce. And uh, it's just wonderful. So you, you got to kind of experiment and learn what, what to do with it. What else you see there? I don't know. The, the, the seasoning on it looks like it's not like... I don't know, it looks like y'all just poured some salad dressing on it. So I don't know what it is, but it looks interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know about the seasoning. Yeah, seasoning's important, and you want to pick the right seasoning. So, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. Somebody, somebody else was saying something about seasoning. How about half the plate being vegetables? What do you think? I mean, it's got broccoli, and if those are tomatoes, it's got tomatoes. And I see onion on the other plate. Somebody okay. in that plate must not have liked them. But, you know, that's, that's, you got some of it, but I don't think it's half of it. So. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like it, but you could do that. In other words, when we say half your plate, fruits and vegetables, it doesn't mean you have to have every plate of food just exactly. Well, let's see, half, you know, quarter, and all that. You can just mix it all up. Okay, so... So, you know, you can, that can be half your plate, it may not be, but you, you kind of want to make sure it is. So, okay, let's look at another picture. Mm. Okay, breakfast. Mm. <laughs> okay, what do you see here? What's good? What's? I just see goodness. What? 
I oh. see goodness. <laughs> okay, she, she just sees goodness. But let's talk about it, detail it out. What, what do you see that's good? It has your nuts, so that your little bit of uh, you know, oils, healthy fats that you need. Okay, excellent. Nuts. We, we need a little bit of fat, okay? Not a lot. Fats have lots of calories, but fats help us uh, metabolize and digest uh, fat-soluble vitamins. So what, what are good sources of, nut, of fats? What are good sources of fat? Avocados. Avocados, nuts, peanut butter, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Okay, good, good. We have some nuts. Okay, should have nuts every day. Not a lot, but some. Yeah. Oh, either one. It looks palatable, meaning like uh, you want to eat it. Excellent, excellent. Looks are important. And, that, and, and that's not just, um, it's not just the looks of the color. It's just the way it looks. And, and so that it, when you're eating, you can enjoy it. Okay, that's important to help you digest well and have it really benefit your body. So that's extremely important. Yeah. It looks like there's a type of grain that's taken up a little under half of the bowl, which will give you a lot of energy through the That's day. right. That's right. Here again, so you have half the bowl, you got the fruits, you know, there, and then you have that grain. And once again, we really want to make an, a point about processed versus unprocessed whole versus refined, okay, you want to go process, unprocessed, excuse me. Okay, you want to go unprocessed, you know, you know, it sounds like you know. Go unprocessed, go whole grains. You know, I just learned that um, when, when you go to the store and you get bread and, and you can get brown bread, you got to be careful because there's a lot of brown bread that's actually not just quite processed, but actually refined. Look at the ingredients. The first ingredient should say whole. The first word should be whole, wheat, okay? But if it says unbleached, enriched flour or bleached religion, that's, even though it's brown, that's, that's a more refined product which would cause more problems to your body. Okay, real good. All right, and um, finally this one. What, what's good? What's, <laughs> Glad you all ate breakfast already. <laughs> okay, what what do you see good about it? What do you? It's got all the three things we've talked about. You know, it has your protein, your vegetables, and your grains. This is really a pretty high protein meal because you got tofu there, which is really really good protein. You got the green beans, which have protein. You got your grains, which got protein. So this is a really protein jam, and it's good to get protein in the morning, and so this is a plate that has that. Yeah. It's pretty simple. <laughs> Very simple. That's so important. You don't need to make a comp making a complicated meal not only requires more work, but it requires more work for your body to have to deal with all the different things. So keep it simple. That's, that's great. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, go ahead. If you use the chopsticks, you'll eat slower. That's good. That's good. Okay. Well, some people will. <laughs> I probably will. <wouldn't. laughs> All right. That's good. Eating slow is good. Let's we'll say something about that. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And uh, I didn't want to leave it without uh, including a green leafy salad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a comment. Uh, yeah. I just wanted the yellow stuff. The yellow stuff? Oh, that's, I don't know. Some of those, so I tell you why, it's, it's, it's some sort of grain. Some of those pictures, it could be rice, it could be millet, it could be quinoa. You know, so I, I'm not sure what it is. But any of those, as long as they're not processed and refined, they're, they're good. Yeah. Okay, and here, green leafy salad. Uh, we need those green leafies almost pretty much daily. They're, we, they're good sources of... Uh, folate, of omega-3s, uh, of iron, so it's nice to have that with your meal. Vegetables are such an interesting food in the fact that they were added after the fall, okay? But today we're finding so much in vegetables, antioxidants and phytochemicals and all those things that actually combat disease and protect us from many of the unhealthy things in this world that sin has brought about. So it's almost like the Lord had that set apart and, 
you know, vegetables are just so helpful. So we'll, we'll conclude with just, uh, it's almost, some of it is a review, we talked about that. So pick colors, okay? Pick lots of colors in your food. Um, regularity, regularity is so important. You wanna eat at the same time. And the reason for this is, because our bodies have internal clocks. You know, we have one master clock in the suprachiasmic nucleus in the brain. But your liver has a clock, your pancreas has a clock, your stomach has a clock. There's clocks all through your body. They're set every day. And there's a time for everything. Just like the wise men said, there's a time for everything. This is why shift workers, people who work at night, actually are less healthy. It just messes up the clock. So you want to eat at the same time because your body actually produces, your stomach produces hormones that are released at certain times. You eat not because you're hungry all the time. A lot, part of the reason you eat at times is because your hormones being released and your body's telling you it's time to eat again. So that's, that's really important. Um, and somebody talked about chewing your food. Okay, very important. Talked about eating slow with the chopsticks. Um, I, I don't use chopsticks, I use a fork. But I think I eat fairly slow. You know, you can talk while you eat. I don't talk much when I eat. But you can take a bite of food, and this is not just if you're overweight. Enjoy your food. Put it in your mouth. Put your fork down. Chew it. Savor it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. You know, uh, there's, why did God give us taste buds? I can't think of a practical reason for it except just pure enjoyment. Ellen White said in uh, Ministry of Healing 321, this is a very important principle, some are continually anxious lest, lest their food, however simple and helpful, may hurt them. To these let me say, do not think, about, do not think that your food will injure you. Do not think about it at all. Eat according to your best judgment, and when you have asked the Lord to bless the food for the strengthening of your body, believe that he hears your prayer and be at rest. So make a good decision in your food choices, and, and then trust it to God, and don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I think a lot of illnesses are caused by worrying about many things, including food. This is such an important reason for making the right food choices. In Christ Object Lessons 346, we're told, anything that lessens physical strength enfeebles the mind and makes it less capable of discriminating between right and wrong. We become less capable of choosing the good and we have less strength of will to do that which we know to be right. So the devil in these last days is throwing everything he can at us, and especially at you, at you all as young people. And you want to be ready. You want to have the whole armor of God. A real important part of being ready is to choose the right food so you can, your body can be strong because your mind and your ability to choose depends on the health of your body. That's why it's so important, so important. Um, John wrote a letter and I uh, said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So my prayer this morning is that this blessing that God has given us in food may prove to be a blessing to each one of us, and we can enjoy what God has allotted and prepared for all his children. Let's uh, bow for prayer. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for your love and mercy toward us. We are thankful for all the gifts you give us, a beautiful day, a night's rest, uh, all the colors that we see in nature, and we're thankful for the food that you have prepared for us. Father, we pray that you will guide and direct us and, and, and help us to make the right choices so that we can really enjoy the bodies and the minds that you have given us. Be with each individual here. Bless them during this day. Guide them. Help them in their schoolwork. And just prepare us for the things we know are coming on this earth. And we're looking forward to your sons soon coming to take us home. And we pray these things and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>